to sit down when you're. Sarah Armstrong and Mara Kenfer from Duke Healthy Lifestyles Program stated in 2012 in an interview with the Herald Sun, despite incre increasing attention, childhood obesity continues to represent the most significant threat to public health, and particularly the future affordability of health care in the United States. This article is saying that even though there has been a lot of concern around issues linked to childhood obesity continues to be a growing problem. One major consequence of this increasing rate of childhood obesity will be the affordability of health care in the United States and may jeopardize it in the future. Because I believe that these problems have a high and grave impact on society as a whole, I stand firmly resolved that schools have an obligation to ban unhealthful foods and beverages from their campuses. Schools have this obligation because it is their duty to uphold the value of equality. This means that because the goal of any school should be to educate children in an equal and fair way, they are bound to have ways to stop obesity, increasing the chance of a more equal education. To help clarify the parameters of the debate, I offer the following definitions from Oxford Dictionaries. Schools, an institution for educating children. Obligation, an act or course of action to which a person is morally or legally bound, a duty or commitment. Ban, officially or legally prohibit, unhealthful, harmful to health. Food, any nutritious substance that people or animals eat or drink. Beverages, chiefly in commercial a drink other than water. Campus, the grounds often include the building of a college, university, or school. To better support the resolution, I offer the following contentions and guidelines. Contention one, schools have an obligation not to expose children to unhealthful food advertisements and to teach them to avoid them. Subpoint A. Children who are exposed to unhealthful food ads are more likely to have or acquire bad eating habits resulting in bad health. This in turn increases the risk of developing handicapping diseases like type 2 diabetes, which could distract children from their studies and cause them to miss a lot of school time. Results of the study suggest that children exposed to unhealthy food ads are far more likely to show unhealthy eating preferences. Subpoint B. Being exposed to advertisements, children, advertisements, children's brains make the familiar fast food logos affect their reward center. This means when a ch child who has been exposed to ads to ads sees a fast food logo, <coughs> the brains interpret them as rewards, drawing them to eat as much as they can. And they quote, analysis of the tests on children aged 10 to 14 showed there was increased activity in parts of their brain and in driving and controlling appetite. Contention 2. Oh, Schools have an obligation to close the achievement gap among students by ensuring equal opportunity to education. Subpoint so 8. When children with different obesity related diseases come to school but need to skip classes to get medical attention, not only are schools wasting resources for the health care of these children, but the child with the disease would get bad, bad grades for his or her classes, and often this important instructional time. This creates an unequal learning environment. For ch children who have access to healthy and nutrition also have more educational opportunities. One in three children in the United States is overweight or obese. Significant numbers of these people Young people are grappling with health problems like heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Those conditions can be difficult for a child to manage in any city setting, but they can pose particular challenges for children during the school day. Subpoint so, Another aspect of obesity, which schools should consider, is that children affected by obesity are prone to many psychological problems. Because of their obesity, other kids don't interact so much with them, resulting in bad self-esteem and, in some cases, bullying. This could lower the school's standard both at an academic level and on a certain Some researchers believe that there may be something psychological that's affecting the child's ability to learn. Bell, a dietitian in the Healthy Lifestyle Institution, says others believe because of self-esteem issues and bullying, it makes them less eager to attend school and participate in school activities. Conclusion. Overall, schools are being affected by obesity in many different ways. Mainly, obesity affects the quality of education provided by schools. By having uh, problems in a different appearance, obese 
children are shunned by other children who are obese, and as a direct cause of this, schools waste valuable resources dealing with the problem. These accommodations also mean more work for schools, says Camille Wheeler, a nurse at Bell Multicultural High School in Washington, D.C. It's a lot. It really is, Wheeler said. It takes a lot for the student, for the nurse, the parent, and the school, especially this school, because all the time they are in the school. Also, because of all the problems created by obesity, obesity can become a problematic issue in school where obesity is more common. I am now open to cross-examination and point of clarification. When you were saying your contention, you have one question. Schools have an obligation to fill the achievement gaps among students by ensuring an equal opportunity to education. Good timer. Yep. Yeah. How much time is it? Seven? Three minutes. Maybe we should pause the recording after like every segment of case. Why don't we right, just leave it the way it is? Got. Because then I have to put nice. it together and I'm moving. Miss it? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So what I have noticed when you were talking that you restated the same fact in contention one and contention two. How come? Uh, my first contention was schools have an obligation not to expose children to unhelpful food advertisements. And the second contention is schools have an obligation to close the achievement gap among students by uh, ensuring equal opportunity to education. Yeah, but when you were actually talking, you were saying the same thing. And also, uh, I noticed in your first subpoint and your second subpoint, you had, like, I didn't see any, I didn't find any evidence there. I didn't hear anything. I have evidence for every single subpoint. I didn't skip the and uh, also, you were saying that uh, you said it's, uh, in your conclusion, you were saying, especially this school. What do you mean by this school? Oh, it was a quote by a nurse in uh, Bell Multicultural High School in Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, I guess that was not cool because I, didn't, or I just didn't hear it. Well, uh, <coughs> okay, could I just hear your reason for your resolution? Uh, my, I, uh, schools have enough this obligation because it is their duty to uphold the value of equality. This means that because the goal of any school should be to educate children in an equal and fair way, they are bound to have ways to stop obesity, increasing the chance of a more equal education. Imagine your school not allowing an occasional candy bar. Imagine not a single hamburger in, throughout the years uh, in school. Schools should be uh, teaching kids about what uh, kinds of food are good but, uh, and bad, but they should not police the kids and control them. <laughs> Therefore, I'm, strongly, uh, I'm in strong disagreement with the resolution which states that schools have an obligation to ban unhealthful foods and beverages from their campuses. Uh, to me, it is wrong for the school uh, for the school to control the kids fully. They have uh, to help uh, kids to become independent <coughs> in individuals. My value against affirmative uh, is freedom. I agree with the definitions of the affirmative case. Uh, therefore, I will move on to my first contention. 
and my first contention is uh, that uh, the parents, uh, it is the parents and the kids' responsibility to stay healthy. Uh, my first cell point is um, parents should teach their kids about the food, the food that they should eat. If the, if the parents uh, don't teach uh, this kind of stuff, then they should not be able to even uh, start uh, things like a campaign against uh, the school foods. When a public school would uh, be showing the kids how to live, then it would uh, take away the freedom uh, of teaching kids uh, what they want to uh, teach. Here, Ellen Satter, uh, uh, or the Ellen Satter organization states, parents uh, provide structure, provide <coughs> uh, support and opportunities. Uh, children choose how to, how much, and whether to eat from uh, what parents provide. And uh, this uh, shows uh, that the kids have the freedom, but uh, they should just, uh, but they should just be familiar with the uh, problems that uh, they can cause or it can cause. My second sub point is, uh, if a kid is refusing to stay healthy, it is the parent's duty to tell them to start thinking about their future. <coughs> they should start thinking about uh, their future knowing that uh, they don't want to uh, be healthy. Uh, it could affect the rest of their lives. As said, in general now, uh, uh, PIHO uh, notes that uh, American uh, parents spend a lot of money and effort to get our kids into the right schools. But then, uh, buy them the latest toys, electronics, and more. So why uh, uh, don't we care about what they put in uh, in their bodies? It is al It almost sounds like parents are using money for the right purpose. <coughs> My second contention is uh, kids should have the choice and the freedom to do what they want. Uh, this would take away their freedom and, cho and, and choice if the, some of, from some of the foods, if some of the foods uh, would be banned. On um, uh, fruitarity, it shows uh, from research that kids make better choices uh, as long as there are different things to choose from. Uh, so, um, uh, I uh, quoted, uh, <coughs> by contrast, the presence of green beans and bananas inspired students to make helpful choices for responsibility uh, is an important part of freedom, which is uh, only earned by using it, uh, by actually uh, uh, being responsible. Um, in conclusion, I think that schools uh, shouldn't be uh, shouldn't ban the food just because uh, just uh, because uh, uh, they think uh, that the kids are not uh, doing the, um, uh, not uh, doing the right choices. So uh, it is important that the kids have uh, some of their own responsibility and therefore freedom.
what I was doing pretty much just before. So. Uh, I've been in a public school for five years, and in <coughs> the last public school I was in last year, uh, there was junk food, a lot of it, but there was also a salad bar full of salad with everything, and every day, like, no one would take anything from the salad, even though we have a health class half the year, every year, and everyone knows it's bad for you, everyone, uh, no one takes from the salad bar because they prefer the junk food. What do you think about this? Well, do you actually know anybody that actually had problems with like, their uh, health? Uh, there were many obese children in that school, which you would see them taking three cheeseburgers every day, and they would have, there were like 10 people with diabetes who had to go to the nurse every like hour for, and they have to get injections if they had like different things. So what, what about this? You didn't feel so Well, it doesn't actually sound like there's much choice uh, in that. I mean, if there, it, it just, I have this evidence here and it seems not worthy. There's actually an organization. Uh, so, uh, not sure that I mean it's not this isn't really like evidence that you could actually like back up and stuff so well also I have a uh, the when uh, healthier food is more expensive so this would make some children not be able to afford the healthier food so that would affect the quality in schools making people who can pay for better food have better grades and this is shown in results. Uh, one second. I have uh, something against that. It says that actually healthier food could actually be afforded. And uh, that, what you just said, would actually be against your case. I mean, if you say that but, uh, like, unhealthier actually food, being, it's actually more expensive. Actually being in a, like, school where there a public school, there was, like I said, a salad bar, and for example, a sandwich which had, like, tomatoes and salad, but that was, like, $5. So no one would buy it because it was so expensive. Anything. Even, like, taking carrots was, like, $2. Well, it said they exactly so. Uh, well, then you were actually, then like right now, no, wait, hold on. Let me ask you a question, please. Uh, is this is this actually for your for your case or yes. against your case? Because for my case, because it affects the quality. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> uh, because um, oh, more income stream. Okay, well, okay. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
Also, I think that, as I stated in my introduction, uh, all this, uh, all these unhealthy things are are affecting the different, uh, like the healthcare, the affordability of healthcare. And here I have a, an article, and it says that there are about. Uh, the money spent on obesity, on obesity this year, about today, in the U.S. is three billion, no, three million dollars. So every day, is, there's a lot of money spent for the affordability of healthcare. So even if like making the right choices might start pushing people out of obesity, this would be very slow. And if you took out uh, unhealthy foods from the school, this would be a faster process, making it easier for uh, the Americans to pay for their health. Okay, I'm done. You have 20 seconds to say that. 
You're going to have to okay. move. Uh, $185 million today for obesity related diseases in the U.S. Now, oh, just in the U.S. Yeah. And uh, do you know about how many people are actually obese in the U.S.? No. Well, uh, probably, a lot, uh, probably a lot too, just saying. And uh, since the ratio was like. One out of four, I think, or it was like one out of five or something. One out of wow. every three Americans is obese. Well, close enough. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, I guess that would mean that, you know, the ratio could actually be different. I mean, the, it is, if you would say one out of 20 people oh, would I be mean, obese. Then one out be. of three children is overweight or obese. Well, uh, well, you still gotta look at the ratio, and uh, of what? Well, the ratio. If you say, I mean, if if that's for fifty people, that would be so much. It's but then, if days. it's if it's for, I don't know, a hundred million or whatever. So for a lot of people, then the ratio would be smaller. So but that, that work, it is it is a lot of money the that we're talking ratio. about, but still it is it's one third. It's the same ratio. Uh, no, but the money the that amount of money per people is different than Yeah, but it's way more than in other countries, which is why it's jeopardizing the affordability of healthcare in the United States and something has to be done about it. Well so sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh <laughs> Well, uh, and you were talking about the advertisements. So, can you please tell me a school that has advertisements in it, like about for any junk food? Uh, earlier on in class, we were talking about how there was a school that had a McDonald's in it, and in my school, Hospital. for example. But I remember them saying it was removed like shortly after, so it did It wasn't even in there for long. So. Sometimes you see like. Uh, in my school, like in the cafeteria behind the lunch line, there would be like ads about like the food that we were eating, like about chocolate milk and things like that. And that's helpful food ads and chocolate milk is not good for you. So yeah. Sure, okay. And then also before I think at the questions we're saying um so junk food is less expensive. So why would you not be allowed to? Well, then uh, you were kind of going against your case there. What happened? Well, if you don't, you eliminate junk food. People will have to get healthy food and won't be as obese. Well, then I think you're asking kind of like the wrong question and stuff, and you have the wrong. Uh, um, the wrong value if you're saying, uh, then you should actually be going against that the junk food is too expensive. Because you were so saying that the junk food was uh, cheap. Yeah, because you you, were, uh, you said you should, uh, whatever, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you have to, yeah. you have to do your conclusion. No, you have to say, oh, okay. 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 So, so I'd say pick me because he 
he was also starting to go against his case there. And uh, although this is kind of com confusing to me, and my pronunciation is kind of horrible, um, I think you should just pick me. Uh, <laughs> just pick me. <laughs> yes, just pick me. <laughs> Pick me and I'll kill you. Uh, uh, yes, pick uh, me. Do you want 30 seconds? I have one minute. No, you have 30 seconds. Do I turn this off now? Yeah. Yeah.